Okay, welcome to the Swingcast podcast. Uh, we're joined today by Mike Granato and Sean Webb of Athletic Motion Golf. Uh, they're part of a four-person team uh, with Scotty Hamilton and Robert Merrill that have had quite a lot of success lately working with a lot of professional golfers. How you doing, guys? Doing well. Good, thank you. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about, you guys had a busy summer. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, a lot of travel, a lot of... Uh... A lot of different tours we touched on and a lot of golfers in our studios at home. I know Sean keeps the door revolving down there at 265. Nice. Awesome. So it's not just PGA Tour guys or web.com guys. You guys are working with every type of golfer, I'm guessing. Yeah, I would say Sean can attest to this from beginners all the way up to the best in the world. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. So Sean, A little bit of everything. Cool. So you're down in Louisiana? Yes, sir. Nice. You got. I'm in Shreveport. Like... David Tom's Academy here in Shreveport. Cool. Um, Are those storms uh, yeah. by you last weekend? <laughs> no, we we dodged them somehow. We've been pretty lucky. We we didn't get really hit with much of anything. Oh, perfect. That's awesome. And Mike, you're in Georgia. Yeah, uh, Cartersville, Georgia. Cartersville, up here with Scott Georgia. Hamilton. Yep. Awesome. So you guys have been doing a lot of good work. Um, I think the two of you are one of our or two of our earliest users. Mike, you've had the balance plate for going on how many years now? Oh gosh, probably seven, eight years. Seven, eight off years. Off my so head, you, yeah. So we've we've made the most mistakes of anybody. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. And Sean, you've had the motion plate for four, five couple years now. now. Yeah. Okay. No, about two years now. Two, when we two opened years. the indoor academy here. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So these guys, you guys have been doing a lot of awesome work with. Um, with forces and pressures and using that in your teaching. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, right. So I think what Perfect. we're going to talk about, which is I always joke that the reason I do what I do is to make my own game better. I mean, we all play this game. We want to get better at this, right? As much as we're I doing think it everyone for our students. does that. <laughs> as much as we're doing it for our students, it's more fun to hit it better ourselves too. So yeah. I know you guys mess around with each other's swings. So Sean, just talk a little bit about some of the changes uh, you've made in your own swings relative to you know, the forces and the pressures. Yeah, so um, kind of a long story short, took a lot of lessons in my early 20s trying to play professional golf and uh, ended up uh, at the end of that road with a really right leaning backswing mm -hmm. and um, a lot of a lot of uh, side bend early in the downswing leading to a lot of hooks and, and couldn't um, keep the ball on the planet with the driver really. So along this road, I was always trying to improve my own swing while teaching golf at the same time. So I ended up becoming friends with Mike and he introduced me to the, the balance play. And the first thing I noticed is I couldn't get my pressure to the left early enough. And no matter how hard I tried just to kind of move the pressure over there, um, it, it wasn't happening. So, you know, over time working with Mike and having gears, and this kind of all ties together with body movement because that's kind of a little bit more my specialty and Mike's specialty is the pressure. Um, between the two of us, we sorted out that if I get that right leaning backswing out and get a little more centered pivot, I guess, on the backswing with the upper body, right. um, I was able to make some really solid changes and not only um, able to reduce the hooking, also increase my club hit speed I'm between eight and 10 miles an hour and I'm almost 40 years old. I made my, probably my fastest swing with a six iron a couple weeks ago was hundred miles an hour. Now I was trying to hit it hard, but it would have been the same type of swing I would have made on the golf course trying to hit it hard. I wasn't really jumping out of my shoes or anything. So between the stuff that I've learned with gears and the stuff that, I've, that Mike has taught me, I've pretty much transformed my golf swing into you know, something that's a lot more powerful and a lot more accurate. So um, I can attest to how, how much it's helped me to swing cows. And, and Mike, do you want to speak to that a little bit, how how you've helped me with my swing and some of the stuff we talked about? Yeah, I think it's just kind of the overall uh, concept of it is, you know, I, I didn't come to golf growing up in golf. I came to golf from playing basketball. Uh, Robert came to it from playing tennis. So we kind of have, that's where the, the name comes from, Athletic Motion, is that we kind of have this this base fundamental movement in athletics and if we kind of look at the golf swing a little differently look at it as a time problem and a space problem so you've got just under a second to make it all happen and then you you got to define space by where you put the ball where you take your stance so looking at sean swing in those two kind of constraints he was dead on the money that he just wasn't using that early part of that one second effectively enough and was causing him to really try to cram in a whole lot in that last little really blink of an eye 
for the downswing. So we kind of rolled back the the time, I would say, gave him access to some more movement early, and you can see the results. I mean, it's a great golf swing. Yeah, it is. And so, Do you want me to pull that up? Sure. Scott? Yeah. Um, what what kind of <laughs> changes did you see in the forces when you when you altered those pressures like that? So we talk about the three, like the linear force or the right left force. Uh, the rotational force, or the the uh, torque, it's called, uh, and then the vertical force. So those are the three ways that we find people create speed or power. So th I mean, creating this change obviously changed one of the three forces, or maybe all three of them. Yeah, Mike, we you don't. Want, you want to talk yeah. about how we do it a little differently? We, we, we're, again, I don't know how other teachers use it. Um, I'd really love to find out. That's why I like watching these podcasts. We don't use we don't I don't say the best way to say it we don't try to change those forces but they do change yeah i mean absolutely 100 percent. yeah mm -hmm. we, so we I don't, stick I don't with care the how timing you get out of it right yeah it doesn't matter how you 100 like, yeah. yeah totally it's kind of like you get them for free when you do other stuff really sure. well yeah and that's so, where for my job i want to understand how that creates those changes so so we try to the, the timing for us is paramount like the wind things uh -huh. happen is so big for us right, right, right. and then working well within those spatial constraints really makes the torques come alive and you can see when sean puts up his uh, swing he's got all three of them peaked really well and it's not that uncommon that we see that with our players working at it kind of from this point of view forward sure cool so you want to almost, that? almost like a almost like a litmus test you know if, if, we, if we get the other aspects of it correct we can go back and look and see if it changed the torques and, and forces in the ground, and we can see if we're doing things the right way. Totally. A, a little story. I was working at Chuck Cook's facility in, in Austin, and um, we were working to get his torque up. We thought he needed a little more torque in the swing, and, and we got his torque up, but his linear went down. And he looked at me. He's like, that doesn't surprise me. He's like, you can never make one change in a golf swing, right? As soon as you make one change. Oh, not, to, yeah, nothing happens in a vacuum. Other, right? right, exactly. And so yeah. to me, you guys are working from the pressure end, but it's clearly – creating changes in forces because I don't think I mean I, we've tested you before when we were at Como's facility there in Dallas Sean you weren't a all three maxed force no guy. not <laughs> even close right at a real hard time with the torque number yeah and I never realized why but um as soon as I started making some of these changes with just the timing of the pressure and then body orientation it, it, it's effortless for me to do that really right. and we're doing some work now with um kind of dominance leg dominance um, mm. And it sounds to me like you'd probably be like a more front leg dominant rotator. So getting more pressure on that front side allows you to produce that torque. Um, and that, that's kind of, I think, where, where Mike Adams is going with his post tests, front, middle, and rear post, is, mm. is really mm. kind of looking at leg dominance. Um, and so I'm doing some work in my lab now with a bunch of grad students doing some standard leg dominance tests and relating it to how people produce some of these speeds. And so it sounds to me like you're more of a, a, of a Maybe not. So you were trying to be kind of a rear leg dominant person when you really weren't that, and and changing it obviously allowed you to. to well, he would all those he would actually get over there, just, just not late. early. Yeah, yeah and yeah. then he wasn't able to stop that forward momentum. Right. So he would. We've seen several where he would be 98, 99 at impact. But that's no good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was Starting pushing from for like too long. 50. I felt like right. I was pushing pushing off for too long from the trail leg. It, right. it just slowed me down, really. So that may yeah. have decreased your linear force. So you probably brought down the right left force and then mm -hmm. ramped up the torque, which is it, which generally what we find. And most people were not looking to maximize all three forces. We're trying to optimize it for that particular person. And so sure. having too sure. much linear in somebody like Sean is probably not a good idea. So. Yeah. I mean, we're, awesome. we're huge fans of where the ball goes. Right. <laughs> yeah. so, Finding that little white thing is pretty Yeah, important. you kind of start there backwards. <laughs> you get some pretty cool things, yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, yeah, did you want to show that, throw that up real quick? So if you just share your screen, Sean, we'll have a quick Oh, uh, yeah, let me do that. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see here. I mean, w we basically turned you – I mean, when we do our Level 2 presentations, we've seen one PGA Tour player previously was Justin Rose that got – all three of the forces maximized. Um, and we've got you into that. A, a few more now. We've seen Robert Garrigus now. Uh, mm. Terry Rolls has tested him in, in Phoenix, and he's another one that's come through as a – he actually tested him in flip-flops. He just walked in one day and took a couple rips, and, and he, <laughs> was, he, was, uh, he was all three maximized as well. So it's a, it's a rare feat that you have all three. Um, 
I don't know why. I haven't I seen uh, I haven't seen Robert's trace, but Justin gets over there really early. I know yeah. he and Sean. I've worked on back. Not sure exactly what they've done, yeah. but they've really got him moving left early. Yeah, he's and he's oldest. actually Sean will tell you he's the one guy he tries to slow down a little bit because he almost gets left too early. He's like too 90, early. Yeah, ninety percent before left arm parallel, which is. Which There's always the other side of the coin, there right? Is. Yeah, then you can't teach everybody the same thing. That's what we're trying to That's say right. here. But don't worry too much about it, about it, Sean. That was awesome. I think we, we kind of got the message across, and I know you guys are doing some awesome work there. And, I, again, I, I think it's cool that you, you don't have to come at it from the same way. Not everybody teaches the same way. Not everybody learns the same way. And you guys have yes, got some exactly awesome right. results coming, coming from the pressure side of it and then obviously ca cha causing the changes in the forces as well because, again, you can't just make one change in the golf swing. So, um, thanks so much for your time, guys. I didn't want to. I don't want to no take so much of your time. But uh, so that's Athletic Motion Golf again. Sean Webb, Robert Merrill, Scotty Hamilton, and Mike Granato doing some awesome work, getting guys, making sure they can find their ball and put it in the hole. <laughs> right. Oh, Love birdies. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, thanks boys. a lot. All right. Take care, All right, guys. guys. Bye See ya. Now. See ya.